Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Today I'm going to be sharing a lock sport challenge which will involve three keys, three envelopes and some out of the box thinking. Curious? Well, let's get into it. So here's the situation. We have three keys here, all with the same profile, but with different bitting, and we have three sets of corresponding key pins. Incidentally, I'd like to say a big thank you to Mark Ward at Anglia Locksmiths, who was able to source and send out the key blanks from which I made these in just a few days so that I could make this recording in time. Awesome customer service. So I took each of these sets of pins and I placed them in unmarked envelopes, which I then mixed up. And now the game is afoot. The challenge is this. We want to reunite each key with the correct set of pins using as few steps as possible. Now, one way we could do this would be to start with a stair step decoder like this one, which we could use to measure the key bitting. Then we could use a set of calipers to determine the length of each pin and cross-reference this against a Schlage data sheet to find the correct pairings. But this would be time consuming and inelegant. So I looked around for a single tool that would allow me to decode both the keys and the pins and I came across this card designed by respected pen tester Deviant Olam and recently released and distributed by Red Team Tools in the US. Now this isn't a review of this product per se but I have been really impressed with the DDC20 which is strong, compact and provides precise stair step cutouts for the keys, but also the pins and master pins for four of the most popular domestic lock brands in the US. As you can see, we have sections dedicated to Schlage, Quickset, Master Lock, and American. The last two doubling because they are both owned by Master Lock and employ the same key and pin spacings, even though for some inexplicable reason they use a slightly different numbering system. So, for example, a number two pin for Master Lock translates to a three pin American model. Using this card, and provided I'm careful to hold the card key and pins parallel to each other, I have an all in one decoder. So, surely all I need to do now is take the six sets of measurements, and it's problem solved, right? Wrong. Because, as I said, this is a lock sport challenge, and so I've added an additional layer of complexity because in true Mission Impossible style, we're going to pretend that this tool will self-destruct after being used just four times. And I'm going to define a single use as the decoding of a key or of all of the pins in one of the envelopes. So given this limitation, can you figure out a way of solving the challenge? If you'd like to give it a go, then by all means hit pause and then come back to see whether we've arrived at the same solution, and you can do that now. Okay, so I'm assuming that you're back and ready to compare notes. Here's the approach I took to solve the problem. For the first two of my four allowed measurements, I decoded any two of the keys. In this case, let's say I measured keys A and B. And then for the third use of the card, I decoded one of the sets of pins at random. Let's assume I opened this envelope. Well, if you did the same thing, you'd find yourself facing one of two scenarios. Either the pins would match one of the two decoded keys, or they wouldn't. If they did, great, you can just pair them and move on to the final stage. If, however, they didn't, then by a process of elimination, you would know that they must belong with the key that's not been measured, and you'd still arrive at the first part of the solution. So for the final stage, you just need to decode one of the remaining sets of pins. If we follow scenario one through, it would look like this. In stage one and two, you found a pairing and would have the bitting code for a second key. This new set of pin measurements would either match that key to form a second pairing, the third key and remaining envelope being automatically resolved at the same time, or if they did not match, you could assume those pins belonged with the unmeasured key and you'd still have your answer. If we follow scenario two, you will have decoded two keys and one set of pins which did not match, which led you to pair them with the remaining unmeasured key. It would inevitably follow then that whichever set of pins you decoded in your fourth operation would match one of the keys you'd already decoded. And so again, the final pairing would be revealed at the same time. Problem solved. 
I've racked my brain to see if it's possible to carve away that fourth step and come up with a three-phase solution, but if there is one, I've been unable to find it so far. If you can see something I've missed, then by all means, enlighten me in the comments section. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you are thinking of picking up the DDC20, then I'll leave a link in the description. I got hold of mine for $10, and even after postage and import duties, I think it's very reasonably priced. And you'll be pleased to know that they tend not to self-destruct, even after multiple uses. Now, if someone could please come up with an equivalent tool for the most popular lock brands in the European market, I'd be much obliged. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take good care.